everybody, and welcome to our journey through Holy Week, our Holy Week journey, every day at 3 p.m. We're going to be in Luke chapter 20, and I'm going to read some of this. I'm not going to read all of it, but tonight I want you to take time, read all of Luke 20. And tonight, or today, is the time where Jesus is questioned by the religious leaders. And we're going to see that beginning in Luke chapter 20. One day as he was teaching in or as he was teaching the people in the temple and proclaiming the good news, the chief priests and the scribes with the elders came and said to him, Tell us by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it who gave you this authority? He answered them, I will also ask you a question. Tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or of human origin? They discussed it among themselves. If we say from heaven, he will say, Why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us because they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know its origin. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. So right here, what we need to understand, the entire goal of the Pharisees, of the scribes, of the priests during this time is to get Jesus to slip up and say something so that they can accuse him of breaking Jewish law. And they want to accuse him and have proof of him going against God's law, God's will, God's way so much that they can put him to death. And so right here is an instance, and you see that they struggle even replying to Jesus when they try to slip him into this because Jesus knows what they're doing. And Jesus responds in a way where they know that if they say the wrong thing, they're going to end up stoned because they said, if we say that John's baptism was of a human origin, we'll be killed. And so Jesus, you know, tells them, I'm not going to tell you where my power comes from. But then he goes on to tell a parable. And this is in verse 9. Now he began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, leased it to tenant farmers, and went away for a long time. At harvest time, he sent a servant to the farmers so that they might give him some fruit from the vineyard. But the farmers beat him and sent him away empty-handed. He sent yet another servant, but they beat that one too, treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third, but they wounded this one too, and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What should I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenant farmers saw him, they discussed it among themselves, and said, This is the heir. Let's kill him, so that the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and kill those farmers and give the vineyard to others. But when they heard this, they said, that must never happen. But he looked at them and said, then what is the meaning of the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it falls, it will shatter him. Then the scribes and the chief priests looked for a way to get their hands on him that very hour because they knew that he had told this parable against them, but they feel, but they feared the people. And so what I want you to understand is that in this parable, God is the person who plants the vineyard and the chief priests and the scribes are the tenant farmers. And so God sends us prophets and God sends these people to warn them, to talk to them, to tell them about the kingdom of God. And they treat all of them poorly. And then God sends his own son and Jesus in this parable predicts, prophesies what's going to take place at the end of the week. And the scribes and Pharisees become angry at this because Jesus has told them that they are acting like these tenant farmers. And so in verse 19, we see that the scribes and Pharisees are so mad that they want to find a way to get their hands on him and have him executed that instant because of what he has done to them and what he has said to them. And we move on to, you know, verse 20. They watched closely and sent spies who pretended to be righteous. Then I want you to underline that in your Bible. They watched closely and sent spies who pretended to be righteous so that they could catch him in what he said to hand him over to the governor's rule and authority. They send people who seem like they want to learn, who seem like they're interested in what Jesus has to say, who seem like they're interested in the kingdom of God in hopes of having Jesus slip up and say the wrong thing without them having to worry about saying the wrong thing and trying to slip up Jesus. You know, if we continue, this is where they ask him if, you know, they should be paying taxes. And Jesus responds and tells them, 
give to God what is God, give to Caesar's what is Caesar's. And so that this is what chapter 20, this is what takes place on Holy Tuesday. And as we progress throughout the week, we see the Pharisees and the scribes, and the one who was the betrayer, working their way, pushing Jesus towards his execution. So today we see the scribes and the chief priests questioning Jesus, trying to slip him up. And tomorrow we will see Jesus, as he puts in his word, betrayed into the hands of sinners.